In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the recent 2021.8 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. It is indeed that time again, and no, not that one. It's the first Wednesday of the month, which means a brand new Home Assistant release. We're going to be having a brief look at five of the new features that I really like in this update. If you want to see a detailed breakdown of everything that was announced in this release, then head over to the Home Assistant official YouTube page. Every first Wednesday of the month, Home Assistant do a live stream presented by the founder of Home Assistant and the developers that work on it. During the live stream, you've also got the chance of asking the developers any questions you might have, and you can also take part in the ongoing live stream chat. Or maybe you're more of an audio person, in which case go and check out the Home Assistant podcast. It's available on all major platforms, and it's going to contain everything you need to know about the latest update. You'll find links to the Home Assistant YouTube and podcast in the description below. In addition to this, I'll also leave a link to the official Home Assistant blog post, which contains a written version and a breakdown of all the new features that are included in the update. Just at the bottom of the blog post, you'll find a section on breaking changes. Make sure you check through all these before you do any updates, as it's more than likely going to save you a headache. And with all that said, let's have a look at some new features. The first feature we're going to have a look at is the main meat of this update, and it's the energy dashboard. The goal of this dashboard is to make it super simple for users to get an insight into their current energy usage. The dashboard features these handy glances, which let you know how you're doing consumption wise over a 24 hour period. There's also an option to break it down further and you can actually view this information over an hour to hour period. It also includes these indicators, which help you identify your reliance on the grid and if adding energy storage would help your situation. If you're big on energy monitoring and you've got lots of devices and bits of hardware that allow you to feed that information into Home Assistant, then you're going to love this dashboard. You can graph out all of your energy usage and your production and you can view everything in these handy little glances. You'll also see some new data visualization in the form of this energy distribution animation. To get the most out of this dashboard, you are gonna to need to have devices that allow you to track their energy consumption and usage. You don't have to have solar panels. You can add devices individually and track their energy usage based across the individual devices. However, if you do have solar panels and they are supported by Home Assistant, you are going to get all that extra rich data and information. You'll then be able to couple this with the new integration Forecast Solar that was added in the last update. Forecast.Solar is going to provide you with solar production forecasting. This is going to let you know which time of day you're going to be generating the most solar energy. Combining that with the new energy dashboard, you'll be able to visualize your predicted solar production. You'll be able to view seven days ahead and you can do this on the energy dashboard by using the backwards and forwards arrows at the top here. So if we skip forwards, you'll see a line which represents our predicted solar production. As I said, this is the main meat of the update and there's so much more to the energy dashboard than what I've talked about. So if you want to know more about the energy dashboard, go and check out the blog post or the Home Assistant YouTube video. There you'll find information on how to set up and configure your energy dashboards and also the new hardware that Home Assistant have helped create that will allow you to get information and data from your energy meters and pass it into Home Assistant. Next up, we've got the sidebar, and what the sidebar allows you to do is to create a new layout that allows you to have one big section and then one smaller section on the right. So we can see here in this example, our big section is the energy usage graph, and on the small section, we've got those energy distributions and the other small glances. This new layout was designed for the energy dashboard, but you can use it in any of your other dashboards if you wish. To set the new layout, you're going to want to enter edit mode. You're then going to want to press the pencil icon on the dashboard tab that you want to edit. And from here, you're going to want to change the view type and you're going to set it to be sidebar. You can now see we've got this big section and the small section on the right, and you can move the cards between the two by using the arrows. So if we wanted to move this process of temperature over, we could just press this right arrow here. And if we wanted to move it back, we'd just select the left arrow. Now that's just a very simple example, but you're going to be able to create lots of cool dashboards using this new layout. Moving on then, we've got the statistics graph card. The statistics graph card is going to allow you to display a graph of statistic data for each entity that you add to the graph. In the previous release of Home Assistant, the developers worked on a way of optimizing the way that sensor data was stored so that it could be stored in an efficient way to make the database not grow to a crazy size. Sensor data is now stored every hour as long-term statistical data and it's efficient and quick to load. The new graphs allow you to display this long-term statistical data and the data can be displayed in either a bar chart or a line graph. The bar charts are best suited for metered entities that have a summed value, while the line graphs are perfect for displaying the mean, min and max of an entity. You add these cards to your dashboard much like you would any other card by choosing add card, 
and then you're going to select the new statistics graph card. From here, you can then optionally set a title. You can also choose how many days worth of statistics you want to display on your graph. You can then choose what type of stats you want to display on your graph, and then you can set what type of chart you want it to be. The final thing you'll need to do is choose the entity that you want to display the statistics for. And finally, we end up with our new statistics graph. Up next, we've got the needle mode for the gauge card. With the gauge card, you can now optionally turn on the needle mode, which will add this tiny little needle to your gauge. With the standard gauge card, it just shows a value and partially fills it. But if you turn on the needle mode, it will display a little needle that will point to the value. If you add a severity to the gauge, it will also always show. And there's also a nice animation of the needle moving. To turn on the needle mode for new or existing gauge cards, all you'll need to do is go into the gauge card configuration and toggle on the display as needle gauge. Next up isn't exactly a feature, but it will involve new features and improvements over time. Home Assistant have now hired a UX designer to help improve the Home Assistant user experience. So Mateus is the UX designer and he's going to be working on improving the way that you use and interact with various sections and features of Home Assistant. This is going to improve things like the layout and navigation of Home Assistant and it's going to add things like accessibility features to allow Home Assistant to be more accessible by a wider range of people. Fundamentally, it's going to make Home Assistant easier to use. Now, it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but over time, we'll see these changes slowly come through. And if you're interested in helping improve the Home Assistant experience, they're putting together a Home Assistant research group. So you can go and fill this Google form in and share your experiences of using Home Assistant and your data and feedback can be used to help steer and drive future Home Assistant updates. And just in case you felt a little bit cheated by that last one not being an actual physical feature, I thought I'd throw this one in. So the integration for sending notifications to Android and Fire TV is now available to set up through the UI as opposed to doing it all through YAML. Home Assistant should auto discover it and you can choose configure. And from here, you can just enter the IP address of your device and then set a name. Hit submit and then you're done. And if you're after some help with actually sending those notifications, then check out this video that I did. Or if you wanna know how to send images from your cameras or doorbells to your TV, then check out this one. And there we go guys, that's been a brief and quick look at five new features in update 2021.8. Out of those covered features, if there's any that you want to see me cover in a bit more detail in a future video, then let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this quick update, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future and you're not already, then hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in supporting my channel and becoming one of these awesome dudes, then there'll be a link from a Patreon in the description below. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.